Tom and Jackie Hawk seemed to personify the phrase work hard, play hard. They were both fitness buffs who worked out daily. And Tom put his fitness to good use, competing in amateur bodybuilding competitions all the way into his early 50s. He was even an arm wrestling champion in the state of Arizona. But the Hawks did a lot more than just stay in shape. They invested in real estate and did very well for themselves. To put it simply, the Hawks were a success. And that's how they lived their life, as one. Faithful and loyal, the couple adored each other. Tom would walk on water for her, a friend once said. I've never experienced a couple that much in love, that compatible together. And in their later retired years, the duo had been fulfilling their dream of living on the ocean, spending years cruising around Mexico, traveling the coast of Baja, California, down to Cabo San Lucas, and into the Sea of Cortez. They were truly living out their dreams. But with the grandchild on the way, they decided to sell their 55-foot yacht the well-deserved and return to Arizona. As fun as sailing the world is, there's nothing like being with family. So the couple took prospective buyer Skylar de Leon out on the water one day for a test run. If all went smoothly, they'd sell the yacht to him and return home to raise their grandson. Or so they thought. Skylar de Leon had a dark past. And while he indeed wanted the Hawks' boat, he had no means or intent of purchasing it. If you enjoy true crime stories, please subscribe below and make sure to turn the notification bell to all to be notified every time I upload a new video. To discuss this case in person with me, make sure to join my weekly live stream every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. A couple years before their paths would cross, the Hawks and Skylar de Leon were living very different lives. While they were cruising up and down Mexico living their lifelong dream, de Leon was serving a prison sentence for burglarizing the Anaheim, California home of one of his co-workers at mortgage lender Ditech. Despite having a gun and plastic handcuffs on him during their arrest, he was let off relatively easy with a sentence of just a year in jail, then three years probation. He was only ordered to pay $200 restitution. He was even allowed to serve his time in the Seal Beach City Jail in the work release program, which allowed him to hold a job during the day and return to the jail at night. Skyler had the same level of aspirations as Tom Hawks. He wanted to be successful. He even loved to sail and owned a small boat himself. But he wanted more. And if he couldn't afford it, he just find a way to take it. He had a propensity to make things up as well, including his name. His real name wasn't even Skylar de Leon. It was John Julius Jacobson. De Leon had even tried his hand at Hollywood, getting two small roles on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TV program in 1993. These were very minor roles, not even speaking parts. But Skylar knew how to lie. And it would be this that would convince the Hawks of his legitimacy and put them at ease. Three days before they would go on the boat ride that would decide their fate, the Hawks took some friends out to Catalina Island and discussed the upcoming sale. They had been a little confused when first speaking to the 25-year-old De Leon. How could someone that age afford a boat over $400,000? After all, Tom had a successful career, and even he had taken until later in life to purchase the aptly named well-deserved. It's no problem, Skylar had assured them. He had saved up a ton of money from being a child actor, he said. He also had real estate investments. Money wasn't an issue. This story of Hollywood fortune combined with Skylar showing up with his pregnant wife and baby and stroller to look at the boat was enough to put Tom and Jackie at ease that Skylar really was a legitimate buyer with the money to spend. So they came to a deal. $435,000 for the boat and an extra $15,000 for some extra personal items. The terms were set. Skylar and his wife would return in a few days to take the boat out on a final test run and make the purchase. So on November 15th, as Tom and Jackie waited for their buyer to arrive at the dock, Tom was relaxed, having a casual conversation with his friend, explaining he was waiting for Skylar to come to take him on the final test drive to make sure he knew how to operate everything properly. 
That same friend, Carter Ford, would later get one final message from Jackie telling him they were out to sea. It would be the last message anyone would ever receive from the Hawks. More than a week later, still nobody had heard from the Hawks since Jackie had informed him they were out at the sea trial. Tom and Jackie's family requested Carter drive out to see if he could find anything. Carter immediately knew something was amiss. The boat was docked sloppily. That was unlike the meticulous Tom. Tom and Jackie's family immediately filed a missing persons report with the Carlsbad Police Department. A detective went out to the dock boat and broke the lock on the cabin door, searching around for any signs of foul play. There weren't any, but there was a receipt. Bleach, cleaning supplies, and heavy-duty trash bags. Something needed to be cleaned. But was it by Tom and Jackie? Or was it Tom and Jackie? When nobody showed up after waiting around for a while, the, the detective left a card. Jennifer Henderson, Skyler's wife, called the detective later on, and when questioned told him she and Skyler had bought the yacht from the Hawks. Skyler confirmed the purchase. We spent like 485 on it, he said. When the detective asked Skyler how he afforded the boat, he stuck to his story about having savings from being a child actor and real estate investments. But an investigation into Skyler showed that not only did he not have the money he claimed to, but he was $87,000 in debt. He and Jennifer were living in her parents' garage. How was a couple that couldn't even afford a home purchasing a $400,000 yacht? When hauled in for questioning, Skyler stuck to his story about buying the yacht. But the details began to get more and more convoluted as the questioning went on. I have to be honest with you, he told detectives about the supposed $485,000 he claimed to hand Tom Hawks in a briefcase full of hundreds. The money was from Doug sales. He claimed Tom had asked him to help open up a bank account in Mexico, signing over power of attorney to him to allow him to move all of his money down there. And then Skyler produced the power of attorney, and it looked legitimate. As suspicious as Skyler's story sounded, checks of the Hawks' cell phone records showed their cell phones did ping towers down near the Mexican border the morning after the sea trial. Had the Hawks just up and left for Mexico last minute? Detectives got a call from an American citizen down in Mexico who told them he had seen the Hawks' car on the news and that he had found it sitting south of the border. The man in the home the car was sitting in front of told them Skyler gave him the car. Detectives now knew for sure the Hawks had not driven off after the apparent transaction. Skyler had driven their car down to Mexico. As detectives tried to work out the details, they got harrowing news. Skyler had just called his probation officer looking for permission to leave the country. If he left, there was no telling when or if he'd come back. The quick-thinking DA issued an arrest warrant for Skylar de Leon for money laundering due to his earlier story that he had given them in the previous interview. As detectives arrested him, he was wearing an adult diaper. And in the converted garage was all Tom and Jackie's stuff. Their camera, driver's licenses, and other personal items. When detectives approached the notary that signed the power of attorney Tom and Jackie had apparently signed over to Skyler, she claimed to have witnessed the transaction. Her story matched Skyler's to a T. But there was one detail of her story that really stood out, and not in a positive way. When asked to describe Tom and Jackie, the notary described Jackie as having brown curly hair. That was Jackie's typical haircut. But when they moved on to the well-deserved, Jackie had cut and spiked her hair and dyed it blonde. So why was the notary describing Jackie's old haircut? Detectives thought they might know. The notary was lying. She had never been in the presence of Tom and Jackie. The Jackie she was describing was the Jackie from the driver's license. It was becoming obvious that more people were involved in the disappearance of Tom and Jackie than just Skylar and Jennifer. And the notary wasn't the only name on that power of attorney that detectives wanted to talk to. Listed as a witness to the transaction is the name Alonzo McChain. When detectives looked into McChain, they found a 19-year-old kid with a curious job. 
a jail guard at Seal Beach City Jail, the same prison that Schuyler had earlier served time at for the burglary. Detectives went to learn how exactly an inmate and a jail guard formed a friendship and what exactly that friendship had manifested into on the well-deserved. But before they could get their answer, Machain fled to Mexico. Detectives offered him a deal from across the border. If he came back and talked, they'd take the death penalty off the table. It was enough to get him back across the border. And when he finally began talking, the truth of the Hawks' final boat ride finally came out. Tom had been suspicious when Skyler returned for their final meeting, because instead of bringing Jennifer like the last time, he had showed up with not only McChain, but another friend named John F. Kennedy. Skyler had quelled Tom's fears by telling him Kennedy was his accountant. He wasn't. John Kennedy was an ex-convict and original founding member of the Long Beach Insane Crips. Once out on the water, Machain had held Jackie, tasing her as Skylar and Kennedy double-teamed Tom. They were cuffed and their eyes and mouth taped. In their final moments, Machain noted, Tom Hawks, the loyal husband, stroked his wife's hand through the handcuffs, trying to calm and soothe her. Tom and Jackie were then taken to the kitchen area separately and forced to sign the power of attorneys. Skylar de Leon then headed to the cockpit, and punched coordinates into the GPS. He was purposely and methodically heading to a very specific part of the ocean off Catalina Island, where the water was the deepest. After being led to the back of the boat, Tom and Jackie, still blindfolded, then heard a sound they knew very well from years of boating, the drag of the chain, as Skyler de Leon carried the anchor to the edge of the boat. They didn't need vision to see what was coming next. In her final horrifying moments, Jackie pleaded to see her grandson again. It did nothing to sway Scarlett de Leon away from his diabolical plan. He threw the anchor overboard, and it took with it the hawks to the ocean floor. Tom and Jackie Hawks died in the most horrific way imaginable. Their bodies were never recovered. Alonzo Machain was given some leniency for his cooperation and received 20 years. Jennifer was given life for helping plan it. John Kennedy was sentenced to death. Before Schuyler's trial even began, he also was charged with slitting the throat of an American named John Jarvie down in Mexico after luring him down there with a the false investment opportunity. This, it ended up incredibly happened while he was in the Seal Beach City work release program. At the conclusion of his trial, Schuyler was sentenced to death. At his trial, another motive for the crime came out. He wanted gender reassignment surgery. He had already put $500 down on it and had surgery scheduled for two weeks after the Hawk's death, hoping to use their money to fund it. Sitting on death row and feeling he had no other options, Skyler eventually grabbed a razor and tried to perform the surgery on himself. He is now sitting in the psych ward at San Quentin Prison on death row. As he waits, the state of California is paying for his transition to a woman. If you've made it this far, thank you for listening, and please consider checking out some of the many other true crime videos on my channel. Please don't forget to both subscribe and click the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. I'm Jason Hebert, and I'll see you next time.